it's been just a pretty standard week and like like it the second half of the year is so exciting for mmos like this year we've got blizzcon and fanfest and wow's punching and guild wars is punching and like it just feels like everything's heading in a positive direction so i assume somewhere you're going to bring up some drama <laughs> well i mean it's all a matter of how people perceive drama right because at its core Throne of Liberty is an MMORPG, PC, console. Uh, it's also got the ability to stream to mobile, uh, mobile phones. It's not a mobile phone native, but immediately all this, you start making some people make connections to mobile. One of those systems that they have in place is a auto kind of battle and an auto kind of pathing system in the game itself. Now it's set up where you have more kind of strategic control over that system you can tell your uh you know your character where you want to go kind of farm enemies uh you do have to have the materials required to stay alive because if you're doing auto farming you're not you know you're doing it efficiently it's not like you're just you know hey here's me actually pressing buttons and winning it's basically here's me auto attacking auto farming and if i don't have enough materials that will keep me healed up you're gonna eventually die uh, so it ends up kind of having kind of more of a preparatory gaming experience. But with any auto battle, obviously people make comparisons to mobile games and thus are now uh, vastly concerned about Throne of Liberty as an MMORPG. Where do you fall on this? What do you want to know? Um, with the auto battle stuff, like I don't know who they're trying to appeal to. Like, like I think there's going to be people that want that mythic savage challenge mode rating experience where they're they're trying to compare this to some like week one night fall of destiny and that this game just looks like it's not going to have that and so they're going to be you know upset if they had kind of tied their hopes to other parts of this mmo looked really good but because of that choice like i, I think it kind of pollutes the water for people that like that level of challenge if that's exclusively the way they like to play um on the other hand we're seeing you know, mobile has really grown almost independent of standard gaming. And so like, it does feel like at some point we needed there to be some bridges. At some point there had to be a bridge between, you know, the Diablo actual games and Diablo Immortal. Like Diablo Immortal's all the way over here and everything that's good and bad about it, mostly bad, but like, imagine it had been good just hypothetically for a moment. There'd be no way to bridge those people in. Imagine somebody downloaded it and likes Diablo Immortal and said, is there a way to play this more substantially? And then you just invited them to Diablo 2 and it would just be like, what the hell? Like, I don't know how to do any of this. So, like, it makes sense to me that auto battlers, this isn't the first game that's had auto battlers. We've even tried some of those over the time covering the channel um, that have had auto battlers. It just, like, how far is that going to go? And how much does that represent of your actual core gameplay? Um, well, to, to set some context for you, like if you try to set yourself up for like auto fighting characters that are your level, mm -hmm. you'd be dead within a couple of minutes. Like you, you're not, that's not anything you're going to do that okay. is anywhere like, you know, efficient or, or playing itself. You, you're going to need to set up some kind of like plan for like, hey, I'm level 30. I'm going to go auto fight in this zone that's maybe like level a level 20 zone. Uh, etc. Does so, it run all the time? Like, is my is the theory that my character is running twenty four seven? So, like, Eve Online, your character is doing something twenty four seven. There is this back process. It's nowhere near as important as what you do actively when you're logged on on a day to day basis. But over many years, you have to have a plan for where your your character learns, and so your skill tree is just growing in real time. So you might have a skill that takes seven days to train, and you can line up. You know, I was you can line up a certain number of days of training. Like, is that what we're looking at? That and uh, like farming materials. They uh, you can go in and specifically say like, I only want this kind of material. I don't want you know like uh, m m you know drops from the enemies, etc. So in terms of skills and yes, like you are kind of in a way doing kind of a bigger, longer grind uh, because of this system. And so that's where that's where I've kind of fallen into this kind of. I'm going to give it a shot. Like it's, I don't know if I don't like it. I'm not necessarily excited that a game plays itself because there's a part of me that's like, no, I should play the game. But the other side of my brain goes and says, I've been playing these online games for over 20 years. There's always been people who've been auto playing and auto botting and auto farming that I'm always competing against. Is this just a democratization of that system and kind of giving everybody like you know it's not efficient you're not gonna you know like this isn't how you really play but for those of you who have 
lives and work and things like that, because I've theorized an evolution of the MMO is going to be AI driven where the system learns you. And then like, Hey, if you're on the line, Chris, and I'm stuck at work, you can, I can still adventure together, you know, and, and I can come along my AI version of me. And then when I sign in, then I'm taking actually over control. And now I'm going to bring some level of efficiency here. I'm wondering if this is kind of that step in that kind of direction, uh, you know, in terms of it, where it becomes a strategy. But here's the real kicker though. I work from home. Having the system on, the game on, playing itself when I don't, you know, because I'm not using this computer, you know, the majority of time while I'm at work, what's to stop me from just like, all right, it's just going to be on. And what's to stop that from then displaying in terms of player numbers on Steam? Because if the game is playing itself, that's not my issue. I, like, I don't. The, the, I'm the just whole, saying it, it presents an, an interesting argument. That's an bad right. argument. Oh, it like, is. It's all that, right? Like it's 100% that. That doesn't matter. What my concern as a everyday player is you as somebody that works from home and has an ultra wide, can you have the game running off to the side and you click on it every 23 minutes when it asks you to as part of your Pomodoro or Sprint or whatever methodology you're using to, to work. And now, because I've made the grave mistake of working somewhere other than at my exact computer, I'm never going to catch you. Right? Like, am I going to come back and you're just going to have all this wealth, which then promotes, further promotes no. something like now I have to go like right. RMT to catch you? Like, like right. because you right. have 86 billion resources because you've been, so like, that's why I asked like, can I pre-schedule it seven days in advance? Is this like the island I don't know. in 14? I don't know how detailed, but I've been told that it's like, it does have some impressive, you know, kind of strategy and, and you kind of control how your player does it and to answer Yammer's question uh you know you have it's all player control like you play and you can control and you're actually going to be way more powerful like to a like a hundredth degree than the auto system because but you can do skills a, you can get out of bad now, but a bottom yeah. now is with richer than me right so then this comes down to a great economic question right because if i can only auto battle and get those materials the wealth, I think, is going to be in, in gathering. And then you'll see people try to bot the gathering side of the thing. But the game in and of itself from a gathering methodology, you're not auto running around like, you know, cutting down trees, etc. So, uh, you know, unless I'm mistaken about that, like, I think what you end up seeing is that that kind of thing just is going to keep those materials and those kind of things price wise on the market very low. So I don't think it's going to be a, a, a substantial amount of wealth because it's not like I'm cheating the game. The game offers this to me. And it's not like, uh, you know, like those, if, if everybody's just farming that zone, you come back in and I think that gives you more buying power because you, the market's flooded with people who are just like, well, I farmed this and now it's not worth that much. And so then I don't, I don't know necessarily if you'd be at a disadvantage if you chose not to use the system overall. Would I make more progress? Yes. But I don't think if uh, if I was actively playing the game, would I make more progress than you? Clearly. What do you think? I think that if Final Fantasy XIV had buffed the retainer system to where it brought back tomes or savage level loot or <laughs> best in slotted uh, gear on patch, like week one, my retainers could bring that back. Saying, well, it's available to all players would not at all make even a dent in why people were upset. Yeah, uh, level of access is not the issue. Um, well, level access that. is an issue, but you're uh, conflating it to the hardest end game stuff as opposed to like, okay, so I have a, a retainer that goes out and gets me like a hundred more potions than you. You know, that's like, we, we need to talk about it in terms of scale, right? Like if the game is going to play the hardest level of content, I'm with you hundred percent, but we haven't seen a game that goes and does that. The only way we see that is in PVP in 14 where people have these these systems and these hacks that you know make them you know god tier better than anybody else okay i island sanctuary it works feel, it because it's weird, not right? really that yeah. mandatory it's wildly cosmetic it works in like racing games that you can have them auto race because your progress is not affecting other players the hard part of letting this overtake in modes is like how do you how do you manage that yeah. Um, because if there's an advantage to it, there will be people that push that to its very limit. And those mm -hmm. people will have 
right? So like if in testing, you're like, well, our devs that did it only got 5% more. That's not what's going to happen when you let 50 million gamers right. 50, in. 50 there's, million there's, people. There's like, yeah, let's be, go. There's going to be a thousand people out of that 50 million that just break it. Um, so like those are more where my questions lie is like, how much does it affect actual kind of gameplay? Um, how much does it start to feel mandatory? And if it does feel mandatory, is it fun? Is it fun for the players that they're targeting to auto battle? Because if it's not, then it's just going to be something that's frustrating requirement. Well, especially because, you know, everybody's going to kind of approach this differently. What I, the theory that I have, the, the kind of the just, again, I'm not yay auto battle. I'm like, let's give it a shot because the common complaint within MMORPGs is bots, right? I think 14 handles bots the best because every week they put out like a bot killing report. Like, hey guys, we got these many reports. This is what we've investigated. We have suspended or canceled or, you know, removed these different accounts. Other games sure. don't do that. And I think that's a kind of a big weakness of that aspect. So I'm guessing it takes a lot of work and effort, but bots exist in all online games. And now I'm wondering like, you know, when I ask like, what's the solution? Nobody really has one. And I'm all for a marketplace of ideas. They don't like when you ask somebody like, how do you get rid of the bots? Uh, you just get rid of them. Like, that's not a solution. Like, how do you actively uh, like get these systems in? And maybe AI is going to be a way of kind of helping to solve that. But then you hear the same kind of stories of like, I was just playing this game really efficiently and I got banned. It's like, okay, well, did, like, were you botting or were you not? Like, there's so much that we just cannot know or see. And this in and of itself is like, if we bring it to the people, like, is this ended up being a positive solution, a negative solution? The only way to really try it is to try it in this regards. And that's why for a marketplace of ideas, I'm like, you know what? What's the worst that can happen? You don't like the game? Okay, guess what? There's, an there's another hundred other MMOs on the way. Maybe they'll learn from that or, or, or we'll take it into account when we see how it actually works in the real world this year. What do you think? I, I do think bot detections come a long way. I think that from when World of Warcraft first released to now, like Warden and all that, like I think that anti-cheats have come a long way and we have some very, we have some things that we like and don't like. There are a lot of people for very good reasons that are against kernel level anti-cheats. And I don't think at any point has any of the suggestions been, let's make it native. So like, it feels like a weird thing to be like, well, the cool thing about this is that you won't have to worry about botters botting because everybody can bot. Like that feels like a weird take on it. And doesn't that just make the botters even more efficient? Don't they just spin it up could. the account and just, just like, wow, now I don't even have to write bots for that does the botting. I just have it to just write bots for that just deploys the native botting. So like, it doesn't, I, I don't see how this is a solution that we look back and we're like, wow, I really learned a lot and I'm really glad for that. Like I see a lot of ways this goes wrong. Yeah. But as you said, the worst they can do is ruin their game, yeah. which has <laughs> nothing to do with me. It doesn't impact anything else. Oh. And if it's if it's a bad system and it's like, nope, that didn't work out well. Okay, cool. There we go. Now we've seen what it looks like at scale. Does it actually work? Now, Labad Chakra says, so auto battle is basically if AI took over your character to farm zones, but only used auto attack, no mounts, and then you can take control, unuse the mounts and your full sk skill rotation. Yes. Like in any point during the auto combat, you can either pick up the controller or the mouse and keyboard and then you kind of just resume and take over that uh that fight and uh and, and win or lose and the question that i have about also with this is that this seemingly is a pvp game where like when a boss spawns it will tell you hey the zone is transitioning from a safe zone to now a pvp zone uh you know i'm wondering if in terms of that like or if you're in a zone and it transitions while you're auto farming if that doesn't just give other players kind of more licensed to say hey well <laughs> we've got a wealth of uh, auto farmers out there to go and beat up on because the other side of botting is when you have games that don't allow for open world pvp there really isn't much you can do besides report them there could end up being some kind of fun gameplay moment of hunting down people who are auto farming all day long and and who knows that could actually turn into some interesting content for some uh youtube uh, some aspiring YouTubers out there to, to create if that ends up being the case. What do you think? I would just have to be shown. I don't see it. I don't see where it's advantageous. I see a lot of ways this ends either not exciting or actively badly. Yeah. Um, so I it just like, unless it's something where like, that's their replacement for the retainer system or the wow mission table or 
Like, unless it's like, okay, well, this is something that all com- characters are doing at all times, regardless. And it's just a component of it that, like, mm-hmm. your character is meant to be in this persistent world. And so they're even on when you're not on. But that's happening by default. And it doesn't become something where, like, download our mobile app and check in every 16 and a half minutes. Yeah. Like, that's going to end up being, like, cool. Like, it rewards the people that know life or have some sort of AI know life thing for them. And everybody else can just screw off, I guess. Um so it starts to feel like it would be built into some social media platform as like a retention mechanic and less like something that would be done because well, it's fun. And then that's going to that's gonna tie right into, again, the numbers and the charts, because if you can and you're using that system where you're letting the game kind of farm for you while you're sleeping and offline, that's going to throw off all kinds of numbers in the game. Because when it comes down to what are the active players, we see this in Lost Ark all the time where in Lost Ark, it's like, oh, and they have 200, 300, you know, concurrent players. And like, what percentage of that is actually just people who are botting the game? We do, you know, you, you can only speculate and you can kind of know and you can kind of get hints at when the game goes offline as to when it doesn't update and breaks the bots and all that stuff where you kind of see another level of number come in for a while. And then eventually as they fix whatever broke in their, in their botting, then we, then you see that spike back up, which is, uh, it's my it's mildly entertaining because the internet is no you know like it's no source of opinions online so it's always fun now uh janik says i read on reddit that if you uh, you can only auto battle mobs level five uh below yours and if that's what you read uh janik just fyi that was a mistranslation on reddit from my video you can auto battle uh same level enemies as you you will die probably within minutes if not sooner because you're not going to dodge you're not going to get out of bad uh you're not going to be using your skills and they probably will end up shredding you pretty uh, pretty quickly. Uh, Solid says, any kind of auto battle system just screams our game is a chore. Here, make this slightly more bearable. Uh, what do you think about that? Because it, this is an interesting perspective. This is almost becomes down to respect your time versus respect your investment. Uh, having it as a re- required to be able to compete would feel pretty awful, but having it as an option for people to take part in to kind of, you know, I guess experience more of the world uh, you know, it's a fine, weird line to walk. I'm not going to, I'm not going <laughs> to try to sell it in this case. It's a fine, weird line to lock, uh, walk. What do you think? There's an entire generation, gen, like there's entire genres of survival and simulation games that letting the game play itself for a brief part of it is actively part of the fun. Um, and so if you're playing The Sims or Sim City or Dwarf Fortress or like there, there is I a I don't know whole... if you lost him or if y'all lost me. I'm still here. I'm digging them and it's down to one bar. Okay. I don't know if you, we lost you or you lost I'm me. Right I think. Here. Okay, cool. I have not dropped. Cool. Well, I'm assuming that it was continuing to work and the bars are coming back up. So, all right, we're, we're established. We're, that was, <laughs> that was random. Um, do you there's, want to go to repeat what you said just so I can have a, hear it? So there's an entire set of genres of games tied to simulation, survival, and so on that are like, literally built for this so letting sim city play letting the sims play letting dwarf fortress play is part of the fun so saying an auto battle system on its own is a chore is not necessarily true there are times that that's part of the fun Mm -hmm. but i have yet to see an mmo where that is not used to justify we've made it so grindy but don't worry the game's going to just play part of it for you So like, I'm willing to believe that auto battle on its own is not a flawed feature. I just haven't seen anybody put it into a live service multiplayer online RPG game Yeah, and not tie it to selling auto progress, encouraging a certain amount of player retention, tying behind certain levels of player resources or power or both um bypassing a system that was so poorly designed that they thought players would play it and then they're like oh crap i guess we should just play it ourselves because they're not going to do it um like it's just it's always been the answer to a problem instead of like just adding fun to the game letting dwarf fortress run constantly is fun um so like how do you get that in an mmo yeah, uh, I, my so, preference would be more like party members, you know, that, that are AI driven uh, than essentially the game, you know, being auto uh, auto driven. But we have yet to see that outside of Final Fantasy XI uh, to a degree. And in Final Fantasy XI, it still makes me wish that we would have like the Gambit system, you know, for your party members to kind of just travel along with you and 
then you can make kind of the, the open world as grindy as you want because with a party of four people whether they're friends or they're you know trust companions uh the, the enemies go down pretty quickly but if you want to go and make it as grindy as you want then you just choose not to take you know the ai which is going to make it a little bit slower so you then have control of your difficulty and that's one of the things that's always been appealing about the rpg especially like i'm almost done uh, playing the final fantasy original uh, classic uh, pixel remaster and you can really make that game as difficult as you want um you know especially when it comes down to like your party and, and what you choose to take into battle and the different you know cost benefit analysis that you get in that single player it's kind of hard to translate that into a multiplayer because other people you know not everybody wants the same experience not everybody wants that 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 challenge or not everybody wants it to be so easy you know in that regard um so that's just something interesting to kind of kind of think on we'll have to wait and see how uh it is received because uh you, the game looks like it's gonna be launching sometime this fall and uh and beyond that we'll be getting some actual hands-on with the beta most likely that announcement for the uh, global beta will be coming june 8th uh, on this case so it's gonna be interesting to see